I want you to read the screen right there. Do you see it? 24 days away, six hours, 58 minutes. Before Sul Canelo Alvarez, the WBC, IBF, and WBO ring magazine, former undisputed champion of the world at 168 pounds. He vacated his IBF title. We're going to talk about that later on in the video. You can buy this fight here, as you can see, on pay-per-view.com, ppv.com. You can buy it on The Zone, and you can buy it on Amazon Prime, So, and God knows where else. So what's the you know big deal about being on Amazon? The pay-per-view is going to be $90. And here is the undercard. Now, a lot of people are going to be upset because this is going to be a critical v, uh, video, and this is not a $90 pay-per-view card, especially when you have another big pay-per-view going on the same night. UFC 306 over in the spear the first sporting event from my understanding the first combat sports event in that arena it's going to be an, it's going to be amazing i'm going to be covering that card and this as well to be paying about 180 dollars to watch two pay-per-views in one night i'm trying to look at the the light at the end of the tunnel here you got here is lindy laura taking on danny garcia i'm not sure if it's going to be at the catch weight of 155 pounds like it was rumored kayla plant for the interim wba super middleweight championship the wba is bringing back interim titles versus trevor mccumby you've never heard of this guy have you kayla plant versus mccumby was supposed to be on uh what was that august the 17th it was supposed to be this past weekend the 18th i believe in florida on pbc's first Amazon non-pay-per-view card, but it was put on this card. You got Roly Romero taking on Emmanuel Jaimes, but then listen to this. You got Stephen Fulton, who has a better resume than Roly Romero, taking on a Carlos Castro on the prelims. And he doesn't seem to be too thrilled about that. So I am T-Street Controversy with Fight View 360. This is T-Street Controversy Live. And I gotta be honest, I think that Canelo's, he he's on his way out the door. In fact, let's go back down memory lane. Please make sure you like the video, subscribe. We're gonna be here during Fight Week. Right, I'm gonna let you get a little ice because everybody wants to know what's next. And David Benavides is the, is the person that everybody across, the, uh, across this country and across the world would like to see you fight. You said earlier this week, you're willing. What are your thoughts now? I don't know right now. I'm, I'm going to rest. I'm going to enjoy my family. But you know, if the money is right, I made a call. If the money not, is, is right, I can fight right now. I don't give a shit. So it's only a matter of money? Yeah. You know, at this point, uh, everybody is asking for everything, right? When I fought with Lara, Troll, Miguel Angel Cotto, Mayweather, Callum Smith, Saunders. Everybody, they, they say I'm not going to fight them, and I fight all, all of them. So right now, I can ask whatever I want, and I can do whatever I want. And I'm Mexican. Go ahead and tell your folks in Spanish. Go ahead. Yeah. So there you had it. This was at the end, the post-fight uh, uh, interview after he had beat Jaime Munguia in his last fight. Now, He's been talking like this for the last year or so now, basically saying that he's fought everyone. He, you know, we fans wanted him to fight. He fought Aries Lindy Lara, where people didn't think he was going to fight him. And still, I give him props for that. He fought Austin Trout, Mayweather, Golovkin, Miguel Cotto, Dimitri Bivol. So now the reason why I say I feel he's one foot out the door is because basically he's telling us, look, I'm going to fight who I want now. I'm going to do what I want. I can ask for whatever I want, which is why he's asking for $150 million plus $200 million in the fight Terrence Crawford. Now, I've always believed that you can duck a fight without, um, how can I say, uh, actually saying you don't want to fight. You can just simply price yourself out. Now, he has nothing to really gain. Uh, you know, I mean, actually, he does. He can say, I, I think it would hold up weight later on in the future. But if he was to beat Terrence Crawford, people would say that um, uh, he beat a, a smaller fighter. But if Crawford was to beat him, then Canelo's career would just have a big ass question mark around it because he lost to a fighter moving up. But me personally, I've always felt that Canelo is a 168, a 160 pounder, natural weight, fighting a 168, picking and choosing who he wants to fight. And we're going to get to that. But in the meantime, let's talk about the undercard. And T-Street Controversy with Fight View 360. Let's start with Stephen Fulton and what he's been up to. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. By the way, uh, Fulton's win over Angelo Leo, who knocked the shit out of uh, 
Luis Alberto Lopez a couple of weeks ago has aged really well. I did that video, the post fight on my channel. Uh, Stephen Fulton has been out for some time now. It don't seem like it's been that long, but it has. In fact, let me go pull up his resume really quick. By the way, once again, here's the card. Stephen Fulton is going to be fighting on the prelims. Do you hear me? So Rolly Romero gets a pay-per-view spot over Stephen Fulton. I guess because Rolly's been on pay-per-view before. And maybe Rolly is considered a more marketable fighter. I'm not saying it, but it just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, so Stephen Fulton taking on the Carlos Castro. And basically, let me tell you right now, get this out of the way. And I'm going to do it again at the end of the video. I rate this card on a scale of 1 to 10. I give it a 6. A to F scale. I give it a C. And that's very close. To, that's, that's, like a, that's not a C minus. It's not a C plus. C plus is close to a B. B minus. This is not a B card. Because when you really think about it, you know, the only fight that really has some sort of real significance is Laura versus Danny Garcia. And when it comes to Canelo versus Belanga, we're trying to see if Belanga can, you know, knock Canelo out or if Canelo's gotten old to where a young guy who's never done nothing really in the division like a Belanga can somehow Puerto Rican power beat Canelo. I just don't see it. Once again, thanks for watching. Drop a like and uh, we're going to be here covering this entire card. So therefore, we're almost done. We're almost done with 15 minutes left in the video. Here's this, this, this. So from everything I've been talking, is this a $90 card to you? Is this a $90 card? Rolo Ramiro versus uh, uh, Jaimez. Manuel Jaimez. Caleb Plant versus a Trevor McCombie. When Trevor McCombie ain't done nothing. And that's an eliminator. Arizona Lara versus Danny Garcia. And now, Canelo Alvarez versus Edgar Belenka. So as we pointed out earlier in the video, and I'm going to play this clip again right now, because Canelo has already told us he is going to fight whoever he wants to fight and don't do what he want to do. Because from his thought process, he's fought everybody we wanted him to fight, meaning we the fans. Good and I feel proud about it. Were you certain that you were going to be able to counter punch so effectively? Yeah, you know he's he's strong, but he's a little he's a little slow. I can see every punch. Uh, sometimes he got me because I get so confident. But you know, like I say, that's why I have this this kind of experience because that's why I'm the best. That's why I'm the best, right? You feel you're the best Mexican fighter ever? Huh? Best Mexican fighter ever? No, I don't consider myself the best fighter ever. I think when I retire, my numbers is gonna is gonna is gonna say where the position the position I am. But I respect all the Mexican fighters in the past and the press, and I feel proud about it. I just doing my thing. And so I when do you say it. the best, so when you say the best, you mean the best fighting right now? Right now, I'm the best fighter right now, for sure. get a little ice because everybody wants to know what's next and David Benavides is the is the person that everybody across the uh, across this country and across the world would like to see you fight you said earlier this week you're willing what are your thoughts now I don't know right now I'm, I'm gonna rest I'm gonna enjoy my family but you know if the money is right I made that call if the money is, is right I can fight right now I don't give a shit so it's only a matter of money? Yeah. You know, at this point, uh, everybody is asking for everything, right? When I fought with Lara, Trow, Miguel Ángel Cotto, Mayweather, Callum Smith, Billy O. Saunders, everybody, they, they say I'm not going to fight them, and I fought all, all of them. So right now, I can ask whatever I want, and I can do whatever I want. And I'm Mexican. Go ahead. So right now, I can do whatever I want. I'm Mexican. So... You know, and, and here's the thing. I can dig it. I'm not going to give him too much shit, but don't be, you know, just say you're not going to fight these guys. I understand the media and the fan backlash for saying like, no, I'm not fighting David Benavidez. I'm going to fight whoever I want to fight. You know, y'all been telling me to fight these guys for years. I fought Laura, I fought Cotto, I fought Glover when you said I wouldn't, you know, I'm not fighting him. I fought Bevo. I'm going to fight whoever I want to fight. So for those who don't know, he was in heavy negotiations to fight Chris Eubank Jr., 
And those negotiations fell through. And Chris Eubank Jr. wasn't happy with the money, so he stepped away. Chris Eubank Jr. returning on, returning on October the 12th um, against a former uh, Golovkin opponent against Camille Zermeta, I believe uh, that's how you pronounce his name. He was a former IBF mandatory for Golovkin. So he moved on to Edgar Belanga. Now, Canelo, for some reason, has had a hard on to fight Edgar Belanga for about a couple of years now. For what, I don't know. Just trying to reignite this Mexican-Puerto Rican rivalry. Or um, it's looking like to me, he just sees something. that be like, yeah, I can beat him. Oh, yeah, I can say I beat a young, you know, fringe contender. I mean, contender. You know, I, I, I just don't get it because Edgar Belanga, no disrespect to him. You know, but listen, we're not here to suck these fighters up. We're here to tell it how it is. And Edgar Belanga has not done anything. 22-0 with 17 KOs. Pedrag uh, McCrory. McCrory, yeah. Jason Quigley, Roman Gulo Alexi. He bit him, by the way. Top rank cut him. He bit that man. He bit that man. I call him Cannibal Belanga. You know, so these are the fights that led to Canelo. Now, normally, you fight Canelo, you're coming off of some type of momentum. Like with Mayweather, you were coming off of some type, coming off of some type of momentum, coming off of some type of big win. You know, but in this case, you know, or fans were asking for it, and it was like, "Yo, why won't you fight in your ducking?" But in this case, Belang Belanga, arguably, is one of the weakest opponents of Canelo recently. I mean, you can say John Ryder, but to be very honest, on some days, depending on what John Ryder, I would pick John Ryder to beat uh, uh, Belanga or to give Belanga some issues. You know, so when you look at it, this is, you know, he's he's up there to me. I mean, he's not, I'm not going to disrespect Belanga says he's as bad as Avni Yildirim, but Avni Yildirim was a mandatory, a pushed in mandatory, by the way. He was forced to be mandatory. But Belanga really doesn't do anything. He doesn't move the needle. And then they're charging $90 for this shit, man. 90 bucks. Now, Canelo very clearly doesn't want any parts of Terrence Crawford. It's a win. I mean, it's a lose-lose situation because if he wins, people are going to be like, ah, you ain't getting no stripes. You beat up the smaller fighter, even though the fight would be a mega fight in this generation. But if he loses, it's going to be like, yo, he came up, you know, and he beat you. And I do feel that Canelo sees something in Crawford that he could possibly lose to. Am I saying that Canelo would, I mean, Crawford would beat Canelo? No, but I think he can, especially if Crawford decides to box and move around. Because as I said earlier in the video or leading up to this fight, is that I never considered Canelo a full-fledged 168 pounder. I just think it was a division where he was very, you know, him and his team were very good at picking the right fights. And, you know, the guys at 168 weren't too big. And he tested the waters with Rocky Fielding and Colin Smith. And he was like, oh, yeah, I can compete up here. I can I can hold my own. And he doesn't have to cut weight. But realistically, I think Canelo is a 168 pounder masquerading at 168. And we saw what happened when he tried to go too far with uh, 175. He did struggle with Vodka Belly. Uh, Sergey Kovalev before he ended up knocking him out and then Bevo just outboxed him he never wanted no parts of David Benavidez because he knows that if he fights David Benavidez David Benavidez is going to come in at 200 pounds and also David Benavidez he doesn't want the backlash of putting a weight clause on David Benavidez so then fans are going to say oh well you had to drain him down Canelo not dumb David Morrell same thing I remember when they were like, you know, when it was so much, uh, so many questions about if he put a weight clause on Sergey Kovalev. And from my understanding, there was, but Sergey Kovalev couldn't talk about it publicly. So Canelo doesn't want to deal with that backlash because if he fights David Benavidez, rest, rest assured, he's going to put clauses on him. Whether you think it's fair or not, do I think it's fair that fighters can come in 20, 30 pounds overweight? No, but if that's the sport, if that's the fight you've been fighting, then you fight it. And Canelo's no stranger to it because let's not forget, dun, 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 Amir fucking Khan. He brought Amir Khan up two weight divisions. And remember, Canelo at one point in time had his own weight division for like a few years. Canelo weight. It all started. Let me tell you this story about Canelo weight. Canelo's first fight back after losing to Floyd Mayweather was Alfredo Angulo. The day of the weigh-in, rumors were circulating Canelo was having issues getting that last pound off. So they gave Alfredo Angulo extra money, changed the contract. Voila. The weight was now 155 pounds. 
Eris Lindy Laura, 155 pounds. James Kirkland, 155 pounds. Miguel Cotto, who was masquerading around at 160 pounds, had no business being there. He fought Miguel Cotto. They both fought 155 pounds. Amir Khan, 155. Now, during this time, the heat was on Canelo because guess who was out there? Golovkin and his team Golden Boy at the time was saying he's not ready he's too small he's not a real 160 pounder but then it got so bad that Canelo eventually ended up like lashing out at the WBC and he ended up fighting Liam Smith at 154 why did he fight Liam Smith because they were like they were they were avoiding Golovkin I'm just going to go ahead and say it it was very obvious at the time so he would rather get butt ass naked on this. In fact, you know what? Let me tell you, let me show you how bad it was because I think visual representation will help you. Visual, rep visual, excuse me, visual rep representation will help you. Here's exhibit A. So he was ducking Canelo so, I mean, Golovkin so bad at one point that he boiled down to 154 and got butt ass naked on the scale just to avoid Golovkin. But it doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. It doesn't end there. Cinnamon stick all for the world to see. So let's go look at the resume. So do you see this here? And then look. All of a sudden, in May, he fights at a weird catch weight. Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. at 164.5. So you can fight at 160. Then he goes to fight Golovkin. And guess what? A lot of people thought Golovkin won this fight. But it ended up being a draw. You see what I'm saying? Beats Golovkin. They're like, ah, right, you know what? 168. Goes back down for Danny Jacobs. Kovalev 175. Hey, I can do good at 175. Knocks him out in 11. As you can see, look at these cards. Kovalev was up on two of them. Colin Smith beat his arm up. Avni Yoder, a mandatory. Billy Joe Saunders beat his eye to shit. Billy Joe Saunders ain't been seen shit since. Got fat as shit. Kayla Plant. Kayla Plant was circling around waiting for this payday for a long time. Beat him up. Moved up to 175. Got outboxed by Dimitri Bevo. Beat up old Golovkin. Golovkin looked like shit. Was done. Retired. Some strange, scary rumors circulating around. That has since been denied the last 24 hours or so that uh, Turkey Al Sheikh, His Excellency, was looking to stage Golovkin versus Terrence Crawford. John Ryder, Jamel Charlo made him move up two divisions, but then won't fight Terrence Crawford. So I think it's pretty clear right now. Canelo's probably got three fights left in him. Who I think he's going to fight is I think he's going to fight. He's fighting Belanga. Then I think he's going to fight. Chris Eubank Jr., because he already started those negotiations. Chris Eubank Jr. is just in a stay busy fight. And then who is that last fight going to be? You know, I don't know. I don't know. Who else has he had a hard on for? But I don't see it being David Benavidez. I don't see that. And Canelo's already made a lot of money. I won't be surprised if Canelo fight Iris Lindy Lara. Y'all want to see that? Y'all want to see Canelo versus Iris Lindy Lara 168? For Canelo's last fight, which are, is, it, is it too late that that ship sail? But with that being said, I won't. I won't. I'm not fully counting Edgar Belanga out. I just think he's just unworthy of a ninety dollar pay per view. You see what I'm saying? If this was a regular TV fight like the old days, you know how every now and then a fighter like De La Hoya or even Mike Tyson, you know, a fight on, you know, a low tier opponent on regular on regular like broadcast network like a HBO or Showtime. You know, because they were like, all right, this is not really a pay-per-view fight. This is what this Edgar Belanga card should have been. That should have been like, you know, we're going to give y'all one. And no tell how much Canelo is guaranteed for this fight. So with that being said, go on and follow me on Twitter at T Street Controversy. It was nice talking to you guys. Nice little long fucking $90. They losing it, man. They losing it. And look, people pissed. You know, they're, they're begging people to stream these fights. So by the way, follow me on Twitter at t street controversy boom that's me right there the link is down below in the description box and also here's my facebook i see what people are saying about about canelo what's my facebook why is it not loading there you go let's see what people are saying 
people pissed. I like the undercard more than the actual fight. What up, DJ Notion? Goddamn, undercard is stacked. This looks like I think the undercard is just smoke and mirrors to me. You can say it's stacked, but really stacked with what? Damn. And then you got UFC on the same night. This pay per view is going to do three hundred thousand pay per view buys. I doubt at two hundred and fifty. We're talking stateside pay per view buys. That's what I believe. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I am T Street Controversy with Fight View 360.